So Christmas came and went, and my family gifted me the new RG280V for Christmas because they know how I like these dumb little handheld emulators. Um, so this one is a 2.8 inch screen. Um, the aspect ratio is exactly the same as the original Game Boy Advance, so you don't have any weird scaling issues when you play those games. Um, and it's a vertical layout, so it's laid out like an original Game Boy. Um, the triggers are nested like this, which I, I didn't know that I would like it, but I really dig it. Um, USB-C, headphone jack on the top. I know some people have said they prefer the headphone jack on the bottom, but you take what you get. Um, oop, I turned it off. So let's go emulators. Let me show you some... There's re GBA. But you can see it scales perfectly to this display, nice and bright. And this guy weighs next to nothing. It is it's just a real nice fit in your hand. I think the only gripe is maybe that some people feel it's, it tips back a little bit, but it's so light that I just, I really dig it. Now I am running uh, this, well, let's talk about the specs first. 2.8 inch display. Uh, this is a JZ4770 um, CPU, which is the same that's in a lot of things. Basically it's an RG280, um, uh, M or an RG350 in a new case. The, otherwise, the guts are identical. It has the same emulation capabilities, which means technically it could go up to like PlayStation era stuff, but no analog sticks. So if that's important to you in the games you want to play on a PlayStation emulator, this isn't really the machine for that. Um, it's available with, the, it's got these metal face plates, which I kind of dig. So this one's the classic Famicom look. And then there's also a black and silver, um, but I wanted the, the retro Famicom colors. So for comparison, there's, there's the 280V. This is the 280M with the metal case. It weighs two, maybe two and a half times more. This one's, this one feels great because it's chunky and heavy, but I don't know that I will want to carry it in my bag every day just because they added weight. This guy is probably going to live on my desk at work for lunch hour breaks. Um, there's the 351P, which has got a whole different OS on it and a much faster processor, and it's much heavier. And then here for comparison is the Game Boy Light, and this one's got the TFT mod display in it. You can see it's night and day. Like the new IPS panels are so much brighter. Um, so the the 280V is at a new lower price point because it lacks the analog sticks. If you buy it from AliExpress or one of the Chinese importers like Retro Mimi, it's going to be like sixty nine dollars. You get it on Amazon if it's in stock, maybe seventy nine plus shipping. It might go as high as ninety nine if it's on Prime. Uh, it just depends where it ships from. Um, I would recommend get it from an Amazon reseller that ships from Amazon because then if you have any issues with it, like if it ar arrived broken or whatever, you can send it back from an Amazon shipping location. Um, so it's just a little easier. But um, I've bought stuff from Retro Mimi and not had any problems with them. I've had other people say it took a long time and they didn't have a good customer service experience. So I can't speak to that. Uh, so you got your standard... Four button pad, start select, D-pad. You've got two SD slots. This one's normally covered with tape. This one has the OS on it. This one has the games on it. Volume rocker. The speaker is on the back. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I guess it's a space saver. It can be really loud. Like the speaker gets really loud on this. You got your very clicky shoulder buttons. They're nice and tactile. Uh, headphone out and USB-C now. The first thing I did, because I already have a 280M that's all loaded up and set up the way I like it, was when I started with this one, I immediately went to 
the new OpenDingX beta instead of the Avernic build of OpenDingX because they've got their own fork and they load their own emulators and it's okay. Um, um, I loaded the open, be open beta of open, I'm sorry. I loaded the public beta of OpenDingX and I followed um, Retro Game Core's written guide off their website. Now, the thing you have to realize when you add that that new beta is, A, not everything works super well. There are some emulators that are crashier on the new kernel. Um, what you do gain is like an updated version of the Linux kernel. It moves from like 3.5 to 5 something. And developers are using that for things like the new, there's a port of um, Mario 64 and some other stuff where the source code was leaked and people have compiled custom builds and then stuff like um you know there's like old pc games that are being ported that sort of thing so a lot of those folks are using the new kernel to enable features um the big one for me that i wanted the open beta versus the regular is um not having to take this card out to address the storage so in the open beta you can now go into settings to this usb mode thing and you can set it to mass storage or ethernet. And so the old way of doing everything, the old way of doing everything on these was if you needed to talk to like the internal partition memory, when you hooked up over USB, it showed up as a networking device on your PC and you had to FTP into it, load files, like load new OPK for an emulator and set its permissions. And with this new USB mode, when I plug in there, my PC sees this show up as a, as a flash drive and it basically pops up three storage partitions. Um, one of them's for the games, one of them's for the apps and one of them's for the OS. And you can drop stuff right in there. And that has been really nice. Now it's, it's a beta, it's crashed on me before while I was working on it, but it's still been way more convenient than having, having to address this card as some sort of Linux partition and this card as just the game storage. So, um, Having a spare device has been cool for running that beta because, you know, I don't care if it gets weird or crashy. I'll just reformat it and redo the card. But I still have my my 280M that I play for stuff like that. Um, let's see what else. I'm going to leave this plugged in because my battery was getting low. Go to emulators. So I think this device mainly functions as a great Game Boy device. So here's uh, Gambit with the uh, border on and I've got it scaled one to one so it's not stretched. That just looks really good. And that's the hardware scaling. And the nice thing about the new build of Gambit, if you haven't updated it on your old um, Ibernic device, if you want to save a state, the new build does thumbnails when it saves state. So then when you go back to that menu, load state, you've got thumbnails. Um, but yeah, if you install the open beta, you will need to go through by hand and remove the emulators that aren't supported and add in the newer count counterparts. And if you use Retro Game Corp's guide, they have a list of everything. Um, so far, I found one, I think it was an SNES game that was really crashy, and that's it. Um, but everything else has worked fine for me. So yeah, 280V, um, I really dig the form factor. If you have not decided on a handheld, if your goal is Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, this is great. Um, and it does SNES pretty well. Um, I'm assuming Genesis would be the same, but basically anything PlayStation 1 era or before should run on it. I don't see it as a PlayStation device. If you're going to do that, um, get the 280M that has one analog or just jump up to the um, 351P because it almost flawlessly does PlayStation and it has dual analogs. Um, but if you're looking for pocketability, something that you could slip in your vest pocket on your coat or... Um, you know, in the outer part of your laptop bag and you just want to play some Game Boy Advance, um, 
man, this is a really good form factor, a really good feature set, and it, the price savings if you slow boat it from uh, AliExpress or somewhere, it, it's a really good value. Um, and the hardware is just built top notch. Um, so it has my recommendation. I think it's a great little device. Um, if I were setting one up for somebody who was a complete noob, other than having to teach them, you know, like, oh, you go to your emulators, when you want to quit, you got to tap the power button once, that kind of thing. Um, I feel like this is a great first device. I mean, obviously it's not for kids, but if somebody can work a PC, they could, they could use this. So if you wanted to gift one, the price point's much lower. Um, oh, I forgot to mention the open beta supports, uh, you can hold the power button, tap Y, and go into sleep mode. And then you just tap power to bring it back. So that hibernate is a new thing. Um, there's some other new hotkeys, but I can't remember what they all are. Mainly for me, it was about the mass storage support, the new kernel, and the ability to go straight to sleep mode without having to quit the emulator. Um, I did not find a case that fits it well. But my best guess for a case was this uh, Inatech hard drive case I found on Amazon. It's for some Western Digital pocketable hard drive. Case is a little too big, but it is skinny. And so that's what I'm gonna go with for now to keep it from getting scratched on my laptop bag. But I would really like something that fits um, as well as the this other one I've used for my 351. And it's a little fatter, but it holds all my, my headphone or my earphones and my charging cable, my Wi-Fi dongle, and it fits the, the handout really well. Uh, but the hard drive case I'm using for the 280, I think was only like $7, so I'm not super upset about it being too big. Anyway, um, that's the Weird Chinese Emulator handheld update for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to hear my soothing voice talk about weird Chinese handheld crap all the time, subscribe to my channel, and I will keep these videos coming. Thanks for watching. Bye.